we are given here two fixed charges q1 and q2 lying on x axis and we are also given the electric field line structure surrounding these charges something like this and with this information we are supposed to find the ratio of magnitude of the charges q1 by q2 before answering this question let's look at what is this electric field line concept all about an electric field line is an imaginary line of curve that we draw around a certain charge which is producing that field and a tangent drawn to this field line will give us the direction of the electric field vector at that position also in this model we consider the more denser the electric field lines in a certain region the more intense the electric field there we also need to have a norm on the field lines originating from a certain charge and ending up at a certain charge isn't it and we do have it we consider in this model the field lines to originate from a positive charge and end up at a negative charge what about the number of field lines we need to have a norm on that as well isn't it and we do have it the more the magnitude of the charge we say that the more the field lines associated with it it is proportional let me give an example if you have a plus 2 micro coulomb charge somewhere and if you decide to draw 100 field lines originating from it and if you have a minus 1 micro coulomb somewhere how many field lines are ending up on it correct 50 do you see what to do with this problem now in order to calculate the ratio of the magnitude of the charges q1 by q2 all you need to do is count the number of field lines associated with these charges and take the ratio how many field lines originate from q1 here count it it happens to be 13 and here the number of field lines ending up at q2 happens to be 9 So the answer for Q1 by Q2 is 13 by 9. That's your final answer. Now look at the options. The right one is A. Next we have a question based on electric field vector. We are considering a point here where electric field magnitude is given to us, 10 to the power 5 newton per coulomb, and in direction it is due west. we are considering placing two charges here in two separate cases one is plus 2 micro coulomb the other is minus 5 micro coulomb and in each case we are supposed to find the magnitude of the force acting on these charges and in direction as well in order to answer this we have to go back to how we define electric field vector in the first place how did we define it it is defined as the force experienced by a unit positive charge kept at that position you may ask me what is the physical importance of it simple if you place a positive charge at that position it will experience a force along the direction of the electric field vector itself and if you place a negative charge there it will experience a force in the direction opposite to the electric field vector and how do you write it vectorially or mathematically you write it as f equals q e remember these are vectors vector f and vector e so be careful for the direction sense let's talk about x axis and y axis defined in this fashion so how can we write vector e vector e is minus 10 to the power 5 Newton per coulomb, I cap. Now, let's look at the first case. Plus two micro coulomb placed at that position. What is the force acting on it? It will be plus two into ten to the power minus six coulomb. Be careful about the substitution. You have to substitute the magnitude of the charge with the sign. Otherwise, it will cost you the interpretation of the direction of force. Be careful. Now, electric field in magnitude is ten to the power five newton per coulomb, but we have to write it vectorially. So it is minus five i cap, and the unit is newton, of course. 
So the final answer turns out to be minus 0.2 Newton I cap. Interpret this. In direction it turns out to be due west. Now, let's look at the second case. Here is minus 5 microcoulomb charge placed at that position. The force experienced by that will be minus 5 into 10 to the power minus 6 coulomb into minus 10 to the power 5 newton per coulomb i cap and that will give you 0.5 newton i cap interpret the direction correct it will be due east so these are the forces experienced by these two charges when they are placed at the position considered now let's look at the options the correct one happens to be b Look at this interesting question. We are given here a configuration of two charges, Q and minus 2Q, separated by a certain distance. There are four options given to us, and we have to choose the right one, depicting the variation of electric field along the line joining these two charges. Well, in order to do that, let's split the entire space into three regions. In each region, we will look at the electric field because of these two charges. Remember, the electric field at a certain distance away from a positive charge will be away from that positive charge. That is in direction. If you look at the field because of a negative charge at a certain distance, it will be towards that negative charge. With this in mind, let's look at region 1. First, in the vicinity of plus Q. Obviously, here there are two fields generated. One because of plus Q, another is because of minus 2Q. But the one which will dominate is the field because of plus Q because it is nearer to that point in consideration. Minus 2Q happens to be farther away. Exactly why if you choose this as X axis, the field here in the vicinity of plus Q will be actually away from plus Q. We will uh, take a certain convention. We will take electric field in this direction to be represented as a curve below this line and we will take the electric field in this direction to be represented by a curve above this line. Alright? In that case, do you see that in the vicinity of plus Q, the electric field happens to be towards the left but as you go away from plus Q, it goes on decreasing in magnitude and at one point, the field because of plus Q and the field because of minus 2Q will actually be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. So put together it becomes zero. So the variation will look certainly something like this. What happens beyond that? Well, the field because of minus 2Q takes over and the electric field will be in this direction. But when you go away from plus Q much, much farther, obviously it will reach a maximum value and then falls off to become zero at infinity. Now, let's look at region two. In the vicinity of plus Q, the field because of plus Q will dominate and it will be in this direction. In the vicinity of minus 2q, the field because of minus 2q will dominate and it will be in this direction as well. And somewhere in between, the field will be a minimum. Exactly why the variation will look something like this. Now, region number 3. This region is very simple to analyze. The field because of minus 2q will always dominate. And the field happens to be in this direction towards a negative charge. Exactly why it will start off with a higher magnitude and will go on to become zero as you move farther away from minus 2q. And it becomes zero only at infinity. Now, let's look at the options. 
which one matches the variation that we predicted? It's obviously option A. Look at this interesting question. We are given here three charges, plus Q, plus Q and minus small q. They are even labelled 1, 2 and 3. It is said that the third charge which is minus small q is at midpoint of line joining the charge 1 and charge 2. Alright. They are giving us two cases. 1. Moving minus q along axial line. Basically it is along the line joining the other two charges. And the second case is where minus small q is moved along a line which is perpendicular to the line joining these two charges. That is the equatorial line. And they are asking us in which case is the net force acting on minus small q towards the original position. In order to answer this, let's take each case separately. Here are the charges. Here is this minus small q moved slightly towards right. Let's look at the forces acting on minus q. Because of the charge 1, the force acting on charge 3, that is minus q, happens to be in this direction because it's attractive in nature. So is the case of the second one. The charge at 2 here is exerting an attractive force on charge 3 and it's in this direction towards right. They are opposite in direction, agreed. But what about their magnitudes? If at all, the magnitude of the force because of charge 1 on 3 happens to be greater than the attractive force because of 2 on 3, then the net force is towards the original position. But how do you compare? That's where Coulomb's law comes in handy. What is Coulomb's law? It tells us that the force of attraction or repulsion between two charges Q1 and Q2 happens to be F equals K Q1 Q2 by R square. Well, do you see that the distance of separation between plus Q and minus Q here is greater than the distance of separation between plus Q and minus Q in this case? Exactly why? F31 happens to be smaller in magnitude compared to F32. What's the consequence? The charge minus Q moves away from the original position. It will not come back. So the net force is certainly not towards the original position. All right, let's look at the second case now. In this case, minus small Q is slightly displaced in this direction. Look at the forces acting on minus Q. They are electrostatic in nature and attractive. In which direction? Towards this charge and towards the other charge. They are same in magnitude because this distance of separation and the magnitude of the charges in each pair happens to be the same. So F31 the force on charge 3 because of 1 and F32, the force on charge 3 because of charge 2 happen to be the same in magnitude. Here is a condition. This is one force, this is the other force. Obviously, in such a case, the net force happens to be in this direction along the bisector. And this happens to be towards the original position as well. So now you know. In the case 2, that is when charge 3 is displaced along the equatorial line or along the bisector to the line joining the two charges, the net force happens to be towards the original position. Now, look at the options. Which one is correct? Obviously, option B. Next, we have a question on the application of Coulomb's law. It says three charges plus 4q, capital Q and small q are placed in a straight line of length L at points 0, comma L by 2 and L distance away respectively from one end. What should be capital Q in order to make the net force on small q to be 0? And here are the options. Well, it appears a bit tricky, but a diagram 
will simplify this. Here is the diagram. There are two charges plus 4q and q at the end of this straight line of length L and here is the third charge capital Q placed at L by 2 away from each of the charges in between. What's the question? What should be the magnitude and the nature of capital Q such that the net force acting on what kind of force? Obviously electrostatic force in question. The net electrostatic force acting on small q should be zero. Well, the logic behind this answer is simple. The net electrostatic force acting on small q must be zero, right? So, if you look at the electrostatic force because of plus 4q on small q, obviously it is repulsive in nature and in this direction. Call it F1. There has to be another force vectorially cancelling this so that the net electrostatic force acting on small q must be zero, correct? And that can happen only when capital Q is negative in nature so that it exerts an attractive force on small q in this direction. Call it F2. And if these two are equal in magnitude, the net force on small q is zero. All right. This is L by 2. In order to determine the magnitude of capital Q, we have to apply the force balance condition. F1 must be equal to F2. But how do you determine the electrostatic force of repulsion or attraction between two charges, let's say Q1 and Q2, placed at a separation distance R from each other? It's a Coulomb's law which will help us. It says the force between them, the electrostatic force between them happens to be K Q1 Q2 by R square in magnitude. Let's apply that. What do we get? We get K into, let's look at the first pair, 4Q and small q. This is 4Q. This is small q divided by the total distance of separation between plus 4q and small q happens to be L. So here it is L square and that must be equal to K into capital Q into small q divided by L by 2 whole square. Why? It's because the separation distance between capital Q and small q happens to be L by 2. Now, let's simplify this. We can cancel capital K on both sides, small q once on both sides. Even L square will go away. So what do we get? We get 4 small q equals 4 capital Q. What does that mean? Capital Q must be equal to small q in magnitude not in nature and that's because capital Q has to exert an attractive electrostatic force on small q, right? We know that. So the right answer will be capital Q must be equal to minus small q. Look at the options. The right one is A, 